thank you for joining us this evening for this fourth webinar in our fall series. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague, Elizabeth Whedon, better known as Beta, who has a, had a long family history on the vineyard and she's our resident expert. Right, Beta? Um, the goal tonight is to look at issues specific to the vineyard. Our previous three webinars entitled Adapting to the New Normal, the Pricing Deep Dive, and Improving Your Listing to Ensure Success uh, pertain to the entire Cape and Islands region and they're available in recorded form. So um, we encourage you to listen to them if you haven't already. So let's look back at the 2021 season. The, to look back, um, to look at the, this past season, you have, first have to remember what came before this year. There was the challenge of the lodging tax in 2019. Then we were hit with a pandemic in early 2020 and wondered if there would even be a summer season. Um, but we soon discovered that uh, in fact, the Cape and Islands were such attractive destinations that we couldn't even keep up with the demand. Um, and that was for both short-term and long-term rentals. Um, and this was at the time when some homeowners decided not to even rent their home uh, for the summer. Uh, they may, it might've been their primary home um, or they just didn't feel comfortable renting during a pandemic, which was understandable. So that meant that our in inventory of homes was lower than normal. Um, so the high demand continued straight through summer of 2020 and on into 2021. As far as the demand on the vineyard, you can see here the darker blue line, line represents the number of vacationers inquiring about vineyard homes in 2019. Um, it was a flat year in part because the tax um, came along and um, suddenly vacationers were faced with having to pay between 10 and 12% more for a home and the same home that prior year had been you know, much less. The light blue line shows 2020 starting a little higher in January, but then quickly plummeted to an all time low when short term rentals were banned. And you can see a dramatic increase in June and July when the ban was lifted. Uh, with 2021, the yellow line, you can see that it started out high and has maintained strong interest all the way into the fall. So bookings for versus previous years, you can see that Bookings in 2017, 18, and 19 were relatively consistent with very little change from year to year. But look at the dramatic increase in 2020, a 30% increase over the previous years, and then another 10% this past year. So overall, this shows a 40% increase in bookings over the 2017 to 2019 years. So very promising. And one reason for the tremendous increase in bookings is that in the past several years, we've had tens of thousands of visitors to our site who had never used our site before. Um, between our marketing campaigns and the fact that we don't charge vacationers a fee and the huge increase in overall demand, we saw a 51% increase in the number of visitors in 2021 versus 2019. And we even saw an increase this year versus 2020. So the total increase translates to an 84% increase in the number of inquiries in 2021 over 2019. Um, our goal of course is to bring these vacationers back to our site and to find their home for next year and um, they will if they have a good experience, um, both using our site and they have a good experience renting 
your home. So everyone is always interested in pricing over the past couple of years. Um, the next graph, I love that graphic of the stones. Mm -hmm. um, the next, this graph uh, shows the price increase data on the vineyard versus the Cape and Nantucket. Looking at the blue bar, you can see that on the vineyard prices rose about three and a half percent in 2020 over 2019. Um, at the same time, you can see that the prices on the Cape rose less than 2% and on Nantucket barely at all. But then in this past year, the orange bar, the prices on the vineyard rose by a whopping 10% with more modest increases of about 4% on the Cape and 3.5% on Nantucket. At least in the case of Nantucket, the average price has always been higher than both the Cape and the vineyard. So it's not surprising that their increases were more modest in the last couple of years. So what to keep in mind for 2022? Many of you have already established your prices for 2022. Last year, you were probably justified <laughs> in raising them, especially if you hadn't done so in um, several years. And of course, your expenses are, have increased dramatically, um, especially cleaning costs during the pandemic. Um, so stats are interesting and they're important, but what's critical in terms of your pricing is that you reassess every year. You, and if you do raise your prices, that you're aware of your competition and of your home's value, and that you're not just raising your prices because everyone else is doing that. Um, and remember that as prices increase, so do vacationers' expectations of the homes that they're renting. So you might wanna watch our webinar on pricing for more information. Um, we had uh, last week, um, we have it uh, in video form. Um, so as you're probably aware, we offer a fee-based pricing analysis, which I do myself, and we can send you some more information on that if you'd like. So now I'm going to turn it over to Beta, who will talk more about the, both the future and some of the issues that relate to vineyard homeowners um, specifically. Beta. Yeah, I mean, everybody wants to know where do we go from here? Um, Joan's done a great job of giving us some background on what's happened in the last few years. It's kind of hard to make a decision about the future until you gonna get a look at, at where we stand right now or up to now. Um, it's usually about supply and demand, right? So let's start with the supply side. Um, inventory uh, has, we expect inventory to resume to, to build back up again to the same levels it was at um, in around 2019 or before. Um, we're already seeing homeowners who had stopped renting for a few years. They started out because they were turned off by the lodging tax. And then we had the pandemic and, you know, um, having to, what do you call that, you know, clean their homes to, to a fairly well. So they just sort of took a break for a couple of years. Um, but now they're hearing about all the success the rest of us are having, what fun we're all having renting our homes. So they wanna get back in. So um, we're seeing it's not a dramatic increase yet, but we're definitely seeing signs of um, an increase in inventory basically. As for, as for the demand, uh, it's been pretty crazy the last couple of seasons, as Jones pointed out. Um, obviously, we expect that to weaken a bit. Um, there's so many more people are vaccinated now. The travel restrictions, presumably, hopefully, will be easing a bit by next summer. And families, once again, will return to taking more vacation. In other words, uh, some vacations in the winter, perhaps, but of shorter duration. Um, because of the pandemic, they tended to take one longer one. Um, we had an increase of longer term rentals, as you all know, the last couple of years, but we expect some return now uh, to the way things were. Um, but we still think that the demand for the vineyard is gonna be very high next, next, uh, next season, next summer. In fact, that's actually already been indicated by the early booking numbers. If you look at this graph, um, 
you'll see that early booking, early bookings for next summer to date. So right, these are really early booking season starting probably this summer um, up to pretty recently. Um, the vineyard bookings are up over 100% over the same time last year. I mean, that's just a lot. Even more, it's even more remarkable that last fall, things were really hopping too. Um, last summer, things were, the summer, in other words, the summer of 2020, there was such demand and people weren't able to get a lot of, a lot of times they weren't able to get their, the home they wanted. So things started early last year. So this is a pretty remarkable increase for next year. These numbers are just really impressive. Um, but just keep in mind that even though we're off to a really strong start this season, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is that this wave is going to continue, right? We we may not continue to see these bookings straight from now on till next June or something. Um, they could well slow down. So now I think you all are looking forward to hearing. Um, I know in your comments when in your RSVPing, you wanted to hear about some issues that are only on MV. Um, and the three issues that we're taking on tonight certainly don't have the answers, but want to open these up for discussion are the population explosion, the hiring dilemma, and the ferry situation. So I'm going to start with the population explosion. Um, over the last 10 years, year-round residents have actually increased from 25%, have increased 25%. It's a lot from 16,000 to 20,000 year-round residents. Um, there are now more year-round residents. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but there are more year-round residents than seasonal ones. That's the first time since they started tracking this thing over 40 years ago or something. So um, just things are really shifting. Um, in the summer, the population swells. We all know how crazy it gets in the summer. It now swells to over 200,000. I remember not growing up, but even when I was a young adult, hearing that it was that the summer population grew to 100,000. And I remember thinking, wow, that was crazy. It's now over 200,000 in the summer. Basically, that's a lot of drain on the island's infrastructure. You know, everything that's that's been there, it's, it's pretty much the same as it was. That's kind of a good segue into the hiring dilemma. They're kind of related. Um, I'm sure you guys are all abundantly aware of the dilemma. I'm sure you've all probably had problems finding an electrician or a painter, housekeeper, um, anybody that, um, whether it's last minute or even if you started early, they're just in such short supply. The problem is with the rise in population, the demand for these services are even greater, right? There are more of us looking to um, call on these service providers. And there are also fewer of them. There are fewer people who are on the vineyard um, service people, some are commuting, but that's not, not everybody can do that. Um, and, and why is it that there are fewer people to, to service us? You all know that it's in large part because of the housing problem. It's like one problem begets another. Um, development on the island, in other words, new homes and so forth is, is only growing by about 2% um, at the same time that um, the inventory of, of, of existing affordable housing is decreasing dramatically. You all know that. The median price of a home is now over a million dollars. I mean, it's like there's no such thing as a starter home anymore. Even teardowns are nearly a million dollars just to buy a teardown. Sorry to be depressing. You guys, again, probably know most of this, but what can you do? What, what can we do about this as homeowners? I think the first thing we would um, advise is that you just obviously don't wait too long. If you need it, you know, a lot of times you don't know that you're gonna need help until you go to open your house in the spring or the summer or something, but whatever you can line up now, get commitments from people, certainly your, your cleaning crew. I think most of you probably have one in place. If you don't try to work on that as soon as you can. We have a few suggestions in our home services directory, um, but I thought maybe some of you might wanna go ahead. I know Carrie's monitoring our chat room. If you wanted to put out a, you know, do you know any good painters or something? I'm not looking at it, so I don't know if you guys have yet or not, but you're welcome to try that at least tonight. Um, but finally, if you do have somebody who's on your team that you trust, treat them well. I'm sure you guys all do, but you know, they're loyal to you. 
their loyalty to you is worth a fortune. So if you've got somebody, even if they're not perfect, um, they, they undoubtedly probably already were expensive, but are really expensive now, just, you know, pretty much suck it up because it's much better. The devil, you know, it's better that you have somebody um, than just be stuck without any help at all. Finally, the fairy situation. Wow. It sure seems like it can't get worse. And every year it seems to. Um, this year, the, the uh, fairies, as you know, the, the SSA actually increased their rates and not a little bit. I mean, I was pretty amazed at how high the, the, um, all the fares went up this year. And it seems like as the fares went up, their dependability actually went down even more uh, than usual. So um, it's just a very difficult situation. You guys all know that. I saw some of y'all curious to see how the poll went and how this ranked in your challenges this year. But um, there, were a, there were a number of reasons. I know a couple of boats, personally, I knew a couple of boats that were canceled for technical reasons, but there were weather events too. I don't know. I don't remember. It seemed like more this year where there was just strong winds that canceled boats. Often, um, I know that happens in the off season a lot, but I noticed it this year during the summer. Um, and of course the construction in Woods Hole was a pain. I came over the, uh, about a week ago and perfect everything, weather was great, boat, boat was working great. We got almost into Woods Hole and they said they had to wait because another boat was in the slip. Just sort of seemed odd, like they probably would realize that that boat, you know, our boat was due in then, but they probably had construction issues where they didn't have enough slips or something, but you know, it really is a problem. And of course the traffic on and off the island has just increased so much. Um, we heard from the SSA that 9,000 more cars came over on August 7th this year than in 2019, two, two years, 9,000 more. Just, I mean, the volume has just been incredible. So anyway, next year, hopefully the construction will be completed or a lot of it um, in Woods Hole and um, otherwise, there's just not a whole lot you can do other than, you know, try to fill up your home as soon as you can, get your guests in place, get them reserved so that, I mean, ideally, wouldn't it be great if you had most of your bookings in place by January when the reservations come online and your guests can get their reservations for the summer. So I don't know, Jim, if you now, how can I share the poll? Because I know we're all on tenor hooks, wondering what everybody. <laughs> well, let's, I can share the results. I, there's, I don't think everyone had a chance to respond. Let me see. Yeah. Um, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll share them. Here they go. Finding help, number that, one. <clears throat> yeah, finding good service people. Can you all see that then? I 40%, the ferry okay. reservation system, 20%. Demanding guests, 20%, and 20% of you said it was smooth sailing. So no complaint. Good for you. <laughs> That's interesting about demanding guests. There are stories there, I'm sure. Um, but I just wanted to also mention, obviously, you can contact us anytime. You have our phone number, email address, or on the website. We always love to hear from you if there's anything we can help with. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Carrie, Carrie has been, Carrie, are you unmuted? The and, chat has uh, been pretty quiet. So maybe people okay. want to ask their questions in person. Yeah, too. Um, you can either raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself and um, ask, ask your question or make your comment. We, we left plenty of time for conversation. So don't be shy. Yeah, don't be shy. Lorraine, I, I wanted to particularly point. hear from anybody who had demanding guests. I wanna, I know we felt that, I personally have felt, and I think many of us have felt that vacationers tend to be more, have sort of tended to be more, what do we call entitled or just, as Joan said, as the prices, the rates go up, people's ex vacationers expectations have gone up. Can anybody speak to that? Have, has people, have people noticed that? I can. Renee? That. Yeah. We, we've had um, a couple of scenarios, for instance, the coffee maker didn't drip fast enough. 
the towels weren't <laughs> fluffy enough, mm-hmm. you know, things uh, that we really have never heard in the past, just, you know, to your point, as the rates went up, so did everybody's expectations. And I think, you know, people really felt like they are in some cases, maybe overpaying yeah. and in some cases they might've been. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was talking to someone today and I realized that you know, we talked about, we mentioned earlier how many new vacationers um, came to our site. And I really think that in the past two years since the pandemic, um, more and more families have discovered the advantages of renting a home who had never rented a home before. They had perhaps stayed at a resort or a hotel where everything is pretty consistent and dependable and and expected. And I feel that with a lot of these first timers in the market of rental homes, they may not, they may not, um, you know, know what to quite what to expect and might expect. That John? No. Somebody has unmuted, there's a lot of static. Um, Renee, is it maybe? No, no, she's muted. Um, At any rate, I think that... Jim, can you? That's not me, is it? All that static? I'm putting somebody on mute. I can't tell the name. It's just phone numbers. I'll chat with them directly. Okay. They're back on mute. Okay. Where was I? Um, I I just think that for this whole new crop of homeowners or uh, vacationers who have not rented a home before, uh, that they're not, they they might expect hotel-like experience, but with charm, you know, with the uniqueness of a home. And so they may be disappointed when they arrive. Um, and for many people in the last couple of years, they've taken one vacation and they often talk about that. Um, I, you know, this was our only vacation or our first vacation in a year and a half. And it really wasn't what we expected or they were overjoyed. So uh, that's what we want. But in some cases, uh, I think that they were disappointed and and really disappointed because they had waited so long to have a, a vacation and, and some time away. Um, and of course, uh, I don't know about you, Renee, if you've found that the longer people stay, and there have been a lot of vacationers who have stayed much longer, had much longer vacations in the last couple of years because of the pandemic, the more they have to, you know, in the way of comments, suggestions, um, mm-hmm. complaints, and are not real, you know, they, they are not as satisfied as they would be if they were only staying for a week and just say, okay, well, let's, we're only here for a week. We will, you know, we'll take this as it is and, and not complain. But if they're there for a longer period of time, they are bound to be um, asking for, for more things or complaining more. Did you find that, Renee? Oh, absolutely. You know, a little bit, I, I think what's transitioned in the last few years is that with the onset of Airbnb, where everybody's rating each other, you know, you're rated as a guest, you're yeah. rated as a homeowner, and everything became very concierge all of a sudden. And I think yeah. that was the influence of an Airbnb guest, which isn't something that we've experienced. I mean, years prior, we talk about this as an office that, you know, people were just happy to be on the vineyard, you mm-hmm. know, and, and now it's, you know, the, they don't like the color of the grand. <laughs> and, Running? No, no. Just yeah. Wait. You're, you're breaking. Renee, you're breaking up. So I think we'll we'll just move on. I just wanted to add that if people don't realize, Renee's a realtor. So Renee's not just speaking from one home's experience. That she has, she sees a lot of vacationers over the season. So, mm-hmm. Carrie, can you? Are there other questions that people have been? Yes, um, we have a question. Is the data from your website and not from other sources? I mean, is it just from our website and not from other sources? 
It's the just data from, about bookings and all that is definitely from it's our just site. from we, our website, not other. Not sources. the steamship authority, obviously, or you know, housing stuff that anything to do with bookings, inquiries, all those kind of things that are pertain to our site are just from our site alone. Yes. Does that okay, answer? And it's the same person said it would be interesting if you you could combine all platforms, including Airbnb and others um, anonymously. Just a comment, I guess. Combine what? The data that we showed tonight, if we combine other booking platforms. I would, I wouldn't mind, but we wouldn't don't have access. It. Right. We right. don't, we don't have access to that. I don't know that they do. I mean, in terms of they're, they're all over the, you I know, mean, a lot of them are all over the world or they're just in one town. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't well, know. Our, our, I mean, yes, it would be helpful. I mean, our, <clears throat> our data is quite significant and uh, long running over many, many years. So it's certainly a good sampling of, of the rental industry. Uh, certainly there's more data to be had and who doesn't want more data. Um, mm -hmm. And there are, there are tool applications out there that scrape, but it's just, it's a whole lot of work um, to scrape that data. It's a paid service out there that you can, you know, some of, some of the towns have, uh, chambers in the towns have, have opted in to receive some of that data. So it's out there. Um, but again, you know, our, our data is a good representation of, of the vineyard uh, rental market at this point. I see that Rick asked if we had median rental prices for three, four, and five bedroom homes. Um, I'm sure we could get it. I'm not sure that we have it at the moment. Jim, do we? Not offhand, but yes, we can certainly find, find the median price. That data can be very misleading. That data can be very misleading without some explanation behind it. We do have a, some data we have in house with that compares different kinds of homes, not just by bedroom, but by water proximity or uh, that sort of thing. And that can make such a difference. Amenities, air conditioning, swimming pools. So while it's, got, you know, while it, we, it's a number, I don't know that you can read a whole lot into it, um, but we can, we can try to get that out. Um, did you get the name of who asked them? Yes, I did. It's Brett yeah. Schwartz. Um, someone asked what the latest on the lodging tax and if there are any vineyard towns planning an increase. Um, I have not heard anything about any of them planning an increase. Uh, the one thing that the vineyard and Nantucket are um, don't have is the water treatment tax of 2.75%, which all Cape towns do. So adding to the Cape, uh, most of the towns on the Cape are now at 14.45% tax. So, um, you know, I feel fortunate that <laughs> yours is under, under well, um, 11, I guess, 11.7 might be the highest. Uh, so, um, but there is a possibility that the islands could join the waste, the, the water treatment uh, uh, plan, in which case then you'd be adding another 2.75% to the tax. Um, Rick again said a breakdown of rental prices, which includes the Info like proximity to beach, town, air conditioning, et cetera, would be sure. more helpful. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look at that, Rick. Um, Brian, did you have a? Yes, I had a question on uh, paying the lodging tax, uh, the short term rental tax. Yeah. Uh, I paid it last year, and for some, some reason, I didn't know that you had to file a, 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 file a return with the Department of Revenue. And I just found a page where I could pay the money that I collected. I did, and I never heard from the Department of Revenue of Massachusetts. And this year I poked around and I found, yes, that uh, there is a page where you should uh, fill out the form and uh, you know, fill out a, a, a return and, uh, and then pay your whatever you're collected. 
So I'm not too sure. It seems like as long as they get some money out of you, they're not going to worry about a return that had some statistics in it. So what has been the, the experience of others? It's, it's mixed because I've heard when I went to pay our own remit, our taxes for our uh, summer rentals, I simply went in, chose the month for which I was remitting the tax. Uh, it asked me how much I owed. I told them <laughs> and, uh, and remit and, and paid online. But other people have said that they've had to uh, fill out you know, more uh, detailed about how much they collected and, um, and it broken down and it just seemed a little more complicated. So I'm not sure, but you know, you're on our site because we do not collect any tax. We don't collect, of course, any rental fees or anything. Um, it's, it's all up to you, the homeowners to do this and it's all on the honor system. So um, the, uh, the Department of Revenue, yes, Brian, they're happy to get the money and the town is happy to get the money. And I think most people are very diligent about doing it. Um, but no one is going to ask to see your leases and, and check on that. So it's just, um, you know, it's up to all of us to just go in at the appropriate time and, and remit the tax. The only thing I would add is that when you go to file your income tax, because the rental income by the April 15th of the next year, if you're, if you're declaring X number of dollars of income, rental income, you know, I, I would think there would be a connection there, right? So. Oh, yes, at the federal level, you, you, you fill out a very detailed form. Very but much isn't that, aren't there Massachusetts income taxes as well? I mean, isn't that, uh, aren't they? they well, speak those, they don't want as much data. Uh, it was a simplified form once I discovered it. Uh, I did fill it out. I think it asked for the number of uh, weeks that you'd rented it and, uh, uh, and they filled in a lot of it uh, themselves, but I was just surprised because I hadn't done anything in uh, 2019 or 20, no, 2020. And uh, you know, this year I I, I filled it out because I'm just a diligent guy. I like to be, be transparent on everything. And sure, yep, good for you. Um, someone asked about insurance. Do you need commercial insurance if you rent more than two weeks now? Per the state because you're now collecting hotel taxes. Um, the, you need to have, if you rent your home for more than two weeks out of the whole year as a short-term rental, you need to uh, register with the Department of Revenue. And one of the, in, in 2019, when this, um, or actually January 1st, 2020, I guess, or no, it was 2019, yeah. um, they said that you need to have a million coverage, insurance coverage for a million dollars, um, which had some people scrambling because they had the Massachusetts Fair yeah. Plan, which only offered a half a million. So yeah. you do have to have an umbrella policy for a million dollars. Um, In liability. You're talking about liability. Liability, yes. Um, but you don't need commercial insurance. I mean, it, never just because that. we pay taxes or the, the we collect uh, the lodging tax, it's it, it doesn't mean doesn't turn us into a hotel. So you don't need commercial insurance. Um, what else here? Ada, why don't you go ahead and stop sharing just so we can yeah look see at our one another. faces. <laughs> We um, have another question about um, if people saw that the time was extended for more renters beyond one week. This is from Pamela Frederick. Not sure I understand the question, but um, Pamela, if you want to unmute, feel free to uh, unmute. Yeah, I was just wondering if you saw more uh, renters who uh, were staying uh, greater than one week. Like historically, it seemed that most renters were there for one, took one week rentals. And I just wondered if, if that period has, has been, has grown to two weeks or one month. 
Yeah. Uh, like in the Hamptons, for instance. Right. During, it's, it's not been like the Hamptons for sure, but um, during the pandemic, uh, it was only natural that people were not going to be satisfied with one week. In fact, they were wanting, you know, three weeks, four weeks, six weeks. Um, and that has, and, and right into the fall and, and even the winter, that has diminished somewhat. Last year, I think this past summer, um, it was less than that, although there's still a lot of people who would like to come for, you know, book for two weeks or, or more. Um, but I think in general, um, wouldn't you say, Beta, the, it's, the, the one week rental is by far the most popular for the summer. Um, and it uh, has always been that way. Um, I know that with Airbnb, they, uh, I think that, you know, they um, cater a lot to um, nightly rentals. So three or four night um, rentals, but there are very few people, homeowners on our site who rent for uh, less than a week in the summer. Um, Especially and, on the island where you've got the transportation issues, you're you're just not going to have the shorter stays as much. But all, you know, the other thing I want to say is we have a blog post about the the hidden hidden risks of long term rentals. So you know, I, I don't know if you if guys have heard about that, but just beware. I won't get into the whole thing. There's a blog post on it, but beware if you, those long term rentals sound so attractive and oh, I can book all those weeks, but they're a number of, of risks and downsides to those longer term. I'm talking about longer than a week, obviously, right? Multiple week rentals. Did that answer your question, Pamela? Um, yes, it did. I did see, uh, speaking of longer term, um, where there's some kind of trigger at 31 days. And so people tend to try to rent, if they're going to rent multiple weeks, they'll go 30 days or less. Well, the trigger is they, they don't have to pay tax, tax or something. Yeah. At 32 days, if, if someone rents your home for 32 days or more, it's no longer considered a short-term rental. Therefore, there's no tax to pay for them. So if they stay for a month, there's a tax. If they stay for 32 days or more, there's, there's no tax. So that's what a lot of people would like to do if they can avoid the tax and stay longer. And some homeowners are willing to make the lease, you know, to actually give them those couple of days just because, I mean, it saves thousands, sometimes, I mean, hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. Does anyone have any ideas about how they, we can um, ramp up our directory of, um, of service providers? I know that people are often reluctant to share their cleaning services especially it's like you know sharing a babysitter your babysitter's name <laughs> you know I'm not going to give it out um but um that that does seem to be a real issue um even on the cape as well um, people trying to find reliable help um and um it, it you know i think on the vineyard it's probably even more so I mean, if any of you have any recommendations, give them to us. We can put them on the service provider list on our site. But you guys all good? <laughs> so anybody want to uh, unmute and, and ask a question or share something? Elaine, did I see your hand up? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I can. OK. Yeah. Um, I just asked a question through the chat. I'm not sure if anyone's seen it, but what effects from the pandemic do you see remaining for the long term? For example, are people still leaving longer lead times between the turnovers? Um, are people still taking all of the clutter out of their house, um, not providing magazines anymore? Um, what things are remaining and what things have, what practices have diminished? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, an excellent question. Great question. Um, I think that, you know, in 2020, um, we were all very anxious. We had no idea what, what was really causing the virus to spread. And as you probably know, we were, you know, 
talking to our cleaners and they were spending much more time. And some people took away all decorative pillows and, um, and uh, any paper material. Um, they didn't leave notebook of instructions. Um, and I, I, they're, they're not doing it to that extent anymore. I think we know so much more about the virus and how it spreads and, um, and you know, so many people are vaccinated. I, I just think that things are getting back to more where they, where they were before. Um, but saying that, a lot of people said, oh, I kind of like the decluttered or is it uncluttered look. And um, I think I'm going to keep it that way. Um, I'm not gonna put back all these tchotchkes and stuff. Um, and other people have decided I'm not going to um, provide linens anymore. It was too much of a hassle. And, um, and my guests didn't seem to mind bringing them. Um, but of course, there are a lot of guests who would like them and expect them. So, um, but I do think that's one thing that some people have not gone back to doing is, is providing linens. But, you know, when you're coming to the vineyard and you have a family and you're asked to bring linens and towels and, and, and if you're traveling a long distance, uh, it could be really nice if you didn't have to do that. Raise your hand. Um, Beta, did you have anything to add to that? As no, just I mean, I, I remember writing a blog post about it, and I just can't off the top of my head remember some things. But we talked about that. Are some of these changes here to stay? And I agree with you. The clutter. We hope that that's here to stay because, you know, I think homeowners love their clutter, frankly, a lot more than their guests do. The guests come in and they don't like it. They like that sit <coughs> down hotel look. So mm -hmm. I, th I think a lot of the changes, I think the extra precautions that even though we know now you're right, Joan, that aren't necessarily required because of the pandemic are just advised. I mean, I know I'm more careful about my the linens. I, I don't provide the ones I did, but I'm much more careful about the pillow protectors and things like that. So there's ac there are actually some positive things that we do think are gonna stick around for a while or maybe forever. The other thing is I think that there's a heightened awareness of cleanliness and sanit yeah. sanitizing. And so I do think that the vacationers have come to be very concerned about that. So that is probably here to stay. Um, Caroline, Caroline, did you, yes. you had a question? Uh, perhaps this is just a rumor but I've been hearing that because the vineyard is becoming so crowded, you talked about 200,000 people being there this summer, that people are now thinking, I don't really like the crowds in Edgartown and Vineyard Haven and Oak Bluffs when I go shopping. And they're maybe looking at other places. Are, are any of you hearing those types of rumors? Well, what other places are you talking about? You mean like the Cape, going to the Cape instead? No, I don't I don't know where they would go. Maybe they'll go to the islands off the coast of Maine. I don't know. But where there is maybe less, you know, it seems to be so busy in the summer, mm -hmm. the fair and illumination night and so on. And people are feeling, I don't know. It's just a rumor. No, it hasn't affected I've heard our, that as well. It hasn't affected our, uh, our you know, our cottage rental. Yeah. But I just wonder whether any of you have heard that rumor. Mm. I definitely did. I think people have said that all the time. I, you know, growing up, that we've always complained about all oh, the traffic and the, the, the right, the yes. crowds. But mm -hmm. do we all stop going? I mean, yeah, there are going to be people who say I've I've had enough of it. But there are five people that take their each yeah. one's place. I think because it's still such a beautiful, special, magical place. Mm -hmm. So you know, there are people who are going to reach their saturation point, but. They're just so, it's still so attractive. Okay, I agree. I, agree. I mean, we're certainly not seeing it. The population is going up and up. It's, it's certainly not dwindling, so. And I think people have a real appreciation for being able to rent a home 
have a private area, be able to cook some of their meals at home, not have to go out to a restaurant all the time. Uh, and so I think resorts are probably suffering or they have in the last couple of years, maybe they'll come back. But um, I think that people really do appreciate the, the ability to go to the beach and come back and, and just be in a, a private home um, and have their, you know, quiet time there. Um, and anywhere so. they go, I mean, before the pandemic, you heard anywhere you'd go in Europe, everything is just so crowded and, and the Yellowstone or anywhere there, that's just right. population. Yeah. yeah. We were in Maine this summer and that's, that's pretty good. That was pretty crowded too. Was it? <laughs> I think, yeah, anywhere you go. Well, we, we feel it's a special place, of course, but I was just wondering whether any, anyone else has heard that rumor. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. Sure. So capably. <laughs> we have another question in the chat. Um, are more people moving to turnover days other than Saturday and Sunday? Well, probably because of the ferry system um, and the difficulty in getting reservations, we've seen more people on the islands, of course, change, uh, changing to a different day, a different start day. Um, Beta, you probably could answer this. Yeah, you know what, I, Jeff or Jim, I would really love some stats on that to see so whether here you go. Some, huh? So here you go. Um, oh, wow. For the, <laughs> awesome. Cape and, for the Cape and Islands as a whole, Saturday is 80% of the turnover days. Sunday counts for 16%. So clearly majority are Saturday, Sunday, Cape and mm -hmm. Islands. When you look at the vineyard, vineyard drops to 56% on Saturday, 34% on Sunday. So a wow. uh, major shift to Sunday, and mm -hmm. you're dealing with about 6% on Friday. Um, Cape and Islands is at 3%. So people do shift to Sunday, maybe some on Friday, and you're talking about 1% on Monday and Thursday. Um, I would be interested to see how those folks have done and how, I, I, I think we've always said, and maybe this is the time to try it out if you uh, have struggle with ferry tickets for your guests or your guests are finding a hard time is that people have much more flexible schedule. The pandemic just highlighted that, that people have flexible schedules for work, that it's no longer I have to, the only day I can leave for, for vacation is on, on Saturday or, or on the weekends. Uh, it, people don't mind if it works for their convenience and works for their getting the best schedule. Uh, Traveling and starting your vacation on a Wednesday or Thursday isn't so bad. Um, so it's something to consider if, if, if tickets are, are a challenge for folks. I right. think another really important point to bring up for, for the vineyard are the weddings. Um, for a few years, right, the vineyard is the second most popular wedding destination in the country, only after Las Vegas. So weddings are <laughs> huge. I think when you get to a certain age, you're kind of out of that scene. But if you guys know anybody on the vineyard, it's, it's a huge part of the, uh, what do you call it? The income for the island. So a lot of the time they have a lot of, sometimes if it's a home that really caters to weddings, they may even do a Thursday to Thursday. From what Jim just read, it doesn't sound like too many are doing that. But I do think, I mean, there are weddings on the Cape too, but I don't think anything like what happens on the vineyard. Well, if you establish a, a start day, then you you have it's to be consistent enough. in the summer, um, and especially you know with the turnover cleaning. Um, yes. But um, <clears throat> I would think you know some of the turnover cleaners would would love to have a less harried schedule on a Saturday or Sunday and have a different day of the week to clean your home. But so there's a lot to consider. But it um, I spoke to somebody this morning that exact same thing a new lister and she said. I've always wanted Saturday. I know Saturday's more popular day, but I'll do anything for my cleaners. And she told me she can't do Saturday. So she's mm -hmm. this homeowner is building her schedule around her cleaner who says only on Sunday. So I, I thought that was that was a great question. And thank you for answering, Jim, because I, I can't believe that we're not going to actually see more and more of that. Yeah. Carrie, are there more questions? We don't have any more in the chat right now. Brian's got us. Brian? Yeah, I got a question, or not a question, an experience, and I want to, other have had the same. We've got an unusual number of inquiries. 
I'll call them shotgun inquiries, where people want to rent our cottage off season, outside the summer months. And they say, well, we're even willing to get out of the cottage during the summer months because you've indicated you only rent during the summer. But it, 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 somehow they're getting, uh, whether they get it from your website or elsewhere, they're getting a list of all of these uh, cottages that are available for rental. And then they're inquiring, they're sending our shotgun letters, hoping they're going to hit one. That's going to, they're school teachers, they're firefighters, they're, you know, the, the workforce crowd. Mm -hmm. Have other people had that experience? No. Um. No, I don't. I don't know, but I. I think that this is indicative of the housing shortage on the yes. on the vineyard. Um, I was just reading today I, um, something in the Vineyard Gazette. It, it was published a while ago, but the affordability gap. Um, you know the the difference between a median price and the and what the average family mm -hmm. can afford. And they said it was in 2012, it was 225,000. And then in, two, in 2020, it was 735,000, uh, almost 250% increase. So it, it's no wonder, I mean, so many people I, I've heard, to, there was an NPR um, uh, um, interview um, about a week ago and they said that there are a lot of people, tradespeople and um, medical people, teachers who are offered jobs on the vineyard and they turn them down because they can't find housing for their family. So it's a real problem. And um, I know that on the vineyard, they're considering some kind of a, um, an island wide housing bank perhaps you've heard about that where um whenever mm. there's a you know a property is sold um, you know there's a there's a tax to pay um that would go like a land bank land bank yeah. yeah um but um i you know it's an issue that that affects all of us even you know uh, uh homeowners who own a home and rent it off season for or in season for um, you know, for summer rentals, but um, I'm sure you all, if you had your calendar open for the winter months, you probably have gotten inquiries for those, um, you know, for those, those months. Well, we do reply very politely to each one. Thank you. Thank you. Good for you. Explain that we only rent during the summer season. We also wish them well in finding something that will meet their, their, their needs. So we have a standard response, uh, but we have responded to all of them very politely. Right, right. Yeah. But we do, Jim, right, when we, you talk about the shotgun, we do, we are careful about people who send too many inquiries. So oh, you do. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be spammed by anybody on our site. Yeah. Well, you do, there's some inquiries, they, they, they use your name, they say, oh, Carolyn O'Brien, we've looked at your, your, your house on the on the way to vacation and that's just what we would like and mm -hmm. then you get the ones you can tell they're shotguns yeah and I was like everybody <laughs> yeah well they often have to send quite a few inquiries in order to um, you know find somebody who's able to to rent to them desperate times well if there it's it's eight o'clock uh, if there are no other questions or if you if you think of something later, please don't hesitate to email us or call us. We're always here. Um, probably um, after the um, first of the year, we will start our monthly Zoom meetings that some of you um, uh, attend. Um, and you know, we're always happy to talk to you and, and help when we can. And I hope some of this was uh, helpful to you tonight. And I thank you for attending. Beta, you have any? No, just everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Hard to believe I'm saying that, but um, <laughs> we'll be here before we know it. And I hope you all had a really successful rental season this year. And it looks like things are going strong for next year. Let, let's hope so. Um, but let us know if we can help with anything. Well, thank you for your presentations.
Our pleasure. You're Thanks welcome. Thanks for joining us. Take care, everybody.